good evening. Uh, it's 7.30, and uh, I hear with call the October 25th, uh, 2017, City of Gaithersburg Historic District Commission to order. And uh, let's see who's on the DS. Frank, may I start with you? Sure. Frank Johnson, Assistant City Attorney. Gregory Mann. Robert Love. Mark Feinstein. Chris Kurtz. Dean Ventola. Chris Berger. Fine. Uh, we have a quorum, and let me just read the operating uh, guidance under which we are conducting business. The commission, oh, and here we go, and Mary Jo, welcome. Uh, another commissioner has joined us. Uh, this commission is empowered to meet and act under Article 12 of the City Code of Gaithersburg. The technical qualifications of the staff of this commission and the members of the commission are on file with the City of Gaithersburg are available on request to any applicant and are hereby made a part of the legal record of each and every application heard this evening. Each application heard this evening is considered on its own merit and is not to be considered as establishing a precedent for any other application. Welcome, Commissioner. Uh, our first order of business is the approval of the minutes of September 27th. Have the commissioners had a chance to look? Yes. yes. Any comments, questions? Yep. Okay, well the chair is open to a motion for approval of the minutes. I so move. Okay, do you have a second? A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I'll abstain. I wasn't here. I got you. Fine. So, uh, four in favor, one abstention. Chris, have you got that? Yes. Okay. Our first order of business is uh, 227 East Diamond Avenue. Uh, Chris, is there a staff presentation? There is. The Belt Building at 227 East Diamond Avenue is a two-story brick commercial building that was constructed in 1903. Uh, the property is zoned CBD, Central Business District, and is individually designated. The historic area work permit comes before the HDC in accordance with section 24-227A of the city code. The applicant requests the HDC approve two work items retroactively, the sign installed on the rear elevation and the shutter removed over the east on the east elevation. First, the building sign. This is a Google Street View photo of how it appeared in 2012. The HDC approved this particular sign in 2006. Here it is now. Uh, the face of the sign was changed in September of this year to reflect the business's change in name. The painted wood sign now reads, Green Growlers Restaurant and Bar, in colors that complement the colors of the building. The sign measures 20 feet long and two feet tall, covering approximately 3% of the building's rear facade. A pictorial representation of wheat and hop plants is centered at the top of the sign. Five externally illuminated lighting fixtures are above the sign provi and provide down lighting. Uh, next, the shutters, and we're talking about this window here, and this photo is from 2012. And they were recently removed from a first floor window along South Summit Avenue to reveal a window painted black. The shutters likely were installed in 2006 when a number of exterior alterations were completed on the building. And here's a closer view. Uh, the window space measures approximately five feet tall and three feet wide. The historic district design guidelines for the Brooks Russell and Walker historic district and individually designated historic <coughs> sites note the following on shutters on page 38. Note that they are not in, in support of non-wood shutters. And the same design guidelines note the following in regard to signage on page 39. And they reference that um, commercial signs shall follow sign guidelines for the area in which they are located, such as Old Town. And these are design guidelines for Old Town. They note the following on pages 7. And number one is relevant here. A sign must be subordinate to the overall building composition. And I will point out the pertinent um, points here. Number four, all signs with the except exception is noted are to be externally illuminated. Gooseneck style downlighting is the preferred method. 
Number six, signs featuring icons, including but not limited to icons in the form of any product person or logo are allowed without planning commission review. Number seven, sign materials and color schemes shall be compatible with that of the building facade. Painted wood and metal are appropriate materials. Unfinished materials, including unpainted wood, are not allowed. Number eight, in general, sign materials should complement the style and materials of the building. And number 10, signs shall be professionally constructed of durable materials. Um, under number two, wall and window mounted signs. Number one, the amount of all sign square footage together on one facade cannot exceed 10% of the total non-residential related facade square footage. And finally, number two, a sign shall be in scale with the facade to which it is associated. And the applicant has joined us, Mr. Robert Tennant. If you would come up to the podium and state your name for the record. Uh, Robert Tennant. I'm the general manager at Green Growlers. If you have anything else to add. Um, no, I think you pretty much covered everything. All right, good. All right, thank you. Uh, Dean, let's start with you. We didn't even um, ask if there's any. I'm, oh, excuse me. First off, uh, uh, any uh, conflicts? Thank you very much. Uh, uh, our our normal vice, uh, Commissioner Roddy, is not with us tonight, and so Commissioner LaFrance has bravely volunteered to take <laughs> on it. Keeping me in line is no easy task. So thank you, Commissioner. Uh, any conflicts? No. Okay, great. Thanks. Well done. Um, I just have one question for the applicant. I read in the staff comments, um, and I guess I'll just quote it. Um, it says, staff is disappointed that the applicant completed the work without permitting, particularly since the applicant was informed that replacing the signage would first require a hop. So uh, could I ask why you guys, or why you, or whomever, yes, uh, I'd like to, disregarded uh, that? I'd like to apologize for that. We were in the midst of a lot of moving parts with cleaning the building up. It was in a pretty bad disarray as far as its condition inside and out, uh, just overall cleanliness. Uh, I had a lot of different moving parts going on at once and one of the contractors had kind of popped the letters off and changed it actually, and I didn't realize until after the fact. Um, so that's when I uh, received a visit from Mr. Berger and, and immediately put in for the retro application. So everything on the sign is the same other than the lettering? Yes, sir. So the, bl the black background that looks speckled uh, because of the light reflecting off of it is original? Yes, sir. I, I believe it was uh, freshened up because the paint had kind of faded and had a patina on it, but it, it is the original backing. Okay. And um, the gold then is still the same gold border around? Uh, again, that was was touched up, but to my knowledge, it's the, it's the same gold. It just looks a lot fresher. Okay. Um, what are the materials of this, the lettering? That is, is it uh, plastic? Is it wood? Yes, sir. They're a, a composite plastic. Okay. Could they be painted? Uh, yes, sir. I would think so. Okay. Would you be open to a suggestion to have them painted? Yes. Okay. That's my only questions. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. My only question was to Chris. Um, you had said that the the square footage is thirteen percent. Oh. It's uh, approximately three percent. Oh, three percent. Okay, yes. I heard you wrong. That's, I was saying thirteen seemed awfully large for that, and I was just confused. No, it's okay. a large facade. Yes. Okay. Um, I have no no questions. Um, I actually was in favor of the removing the shutters or putting shutters on both because it, it kind of looked weird mm -hmm. just having one without the other. Um, no, I don't have any really any questions. Okay. Uh, I bet last uh, in terms of the sign and the new name and we certainly wish you well. Uh, my only thought, it, 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 it's just an observation. It's not part of any request on the part of the commission or you. Uh, that it, the shutter which was removed from that right window, the, the <coughs> one closer to uh, Diamond, uh, I thought was more attractive than just the plain facade and offered you a little security. So if, if I were czar of the world and had unlimited time and resources, I probably would have replaced that and put one in the other. But 
that said otherwise, just, you know, Godspeed. Okay. So, uh, commissioners, we have a recommendation here from staff. If I could interject real quick, you Please. may want to ask, uh, was anyone in the audience that wants to speak? Oh, a pair, thank you. I slapped Ms. my device. <laughs> thank you very much. I apologize to the audience. <laughs> Uh, is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak to this uh, in, in any manner? Okay, thank you, and thanks for the reminder. Uh, I guess it's time to decide if we would like to do a motion. Yes. Um, I'll start the motion. Okay. Um, I move that the Historic District Commission, based on the exhibit submitted, the applicant's testimony, and the staff report, findings and recommendation, grant historic area work permit 7728-2017, retroactive sign and shutter review, finding it to be in compliance with city code 24-227.2 uh, of the city code with no conditions. Have we a second? I'll second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposition? Thank you very much, sir. Congratulations. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yep, and Godspeed. <laughs> okay. Uh, our next item is 321 Kent Square Road. Uh, Chris, a presentation? Actually, I was going to ask, the applicant for this particular um, application won't be present, but the applicant for the following application is here. So okay. if you don't mind, we jump we, ahead to that? can we move ahead to that? Okay, yeah. sure. very good. Let's jump to 111 Chestnut Street. All oh, right. The building at 111 Chestnut Street is a one and a half story Cape Cod style residence that was constructed circa 1951. Mm -hmm. The property is zoned R90, medium density residential, and is non-contributing to the Chestnut Neem Historic District. The historic area work permit comes before the HDC in accordance with section 24-227A of the city code. The applicant requests the HDC, HDC approve two work items, an addition with porch and siding replacement. The HDC previously reviewed the addition and siding replacement at last month's meeting with HIS 7720-2017. The HDC deferred that application so the applicant could have the plans revised to reflect the HDC's primary comments, which were as follows. Convert the single low pitch gable roof addition into a cross gable with a side oriented gable roof covering the living room and the cross gable covering the rear bedroom. Either offset the living room or offset the bedroom to break up the mass on the south elevation. Shift the addition farther back from the front of the residence and expand more into the side yard. The HDC also encouraged the applicant to match the window proportions on the addition with those found on the existing house. Um, the HDC also asked that they reuse the existing wood windows on the porch addition and to not propose shutters on the south elevation of the addition. So here is the revised floor plan. Per the applicant's request, the applicant offset the bedroom in this area here. They offset the bedroom to break up the mass on the south elevation. This increased the square footage of the addition by 44 square feet than what was proposed last month. Uh, the applicant also moved up the living room addition so that it is flush with the front of the house. Originally it was stepped back slightly, now it is flush with the front of the house. So again, we have the front of the house as it appears now. Uh, for the proposed addition, the side porch addition will be removed. And here is the revised plans. Um, the side porch addition would be replaced by a low pitched shed roof, which you see here. The windows would match the size of the existing windows on the main residence found here and here. And here is the south elevation as it appears now. And here is what the applicant proposes. Um, last month, the applicant proposed a single low pitch gable roof. It would have gone like this approximately. Uh, the applicant now proposes a shed roof with a side oriented roof covering the bedroom in the rear here. Staff does not find these roofs to be compatible with the design scale, proportion, and arrangement of the existing structure and the surrounding area. 
Um, so we propose a condition uh, for staff to work with the applicant and her architect to create a design for the roofs that are more compatible with the main house. And moving on to the rear elevation. And here's what proposed. Um, as I noted in the staff report, staff still has some questions about the feasibility about the different roofs proposed to cover the terrace. Um, and we want to work with the applicant to iron out those details as well. And here's the north elevation, and here's what that view looks like. And yesterday I received this email from Philip Wessel, who lives near the applicant at 102 Chestnut Street. He wrote this email in support of the proposal, and it will be added to the record as Exhibit 8, so I'll give a moment to read that. Before moving on to discussion, we have the second work item, which is the replacement of the siding. The applicant proposes to replace the aluminum siding on the existing residence so it matches the siding that is to be placed on the addition. The applicant said the proposed siding will be the same as what is found on the white vinyl shed in the rear yard, and that's what this picture is. That's the shed in the rear yard. It's German siding that has a faux wood grain finish. Uh, staff supports replacing the aluminum siding with vinyl. The aluminum lap siding likely is not original to the residents, and the vinyl siding will not have a negative effect on the historic and architectural significance of the surrounding historic resources. The HDC recently approved the replacement of aluminum siding with vinyl for a non-contributing restaurant re uh, residence in the Chestnut Meme Historic District when HIST 7490-2017 was approved for 1118 Meme Avenue at the January 2017 meeting. Um, the Chestnut Meme Design Guidelines apply. They note the following on additions. New work must harmonize with the character and scale of the existing house. The new work shall be differentiated from the old. It shall be compatible in height, scale, materials, elevations, texture, color, and details. And the applicant, Ms. Veronica Enriquez, is here if you have any questions. If you please come to the podium. Thank you. Hi, welcome. Welcome again. Good evening, Veronica Enriquez. I'm glad to be here today. <laughs> <laughs> I should probably answer that. Time. I'm going to. I just wanted to be able to introduce myself. Thank you. Have we, have we any conflicts no. up here? No. And is I there any? You do. I would like to just disclose that we're neighbors. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, okay. That I will remain impartial. Okay. We're counting on you. Uh, is there anyone from the audience who would like to say? Okay. Um, anything you would, would like to add to uh, what Mr. Berger has presented? Or, or uh, also accompanied by Mr. Wessel's letter is a part of the record here. Yeah, I didn't quite get about that letter. What is that letter? It just arrived two days ago. He, he wrote in support of your newest proposal. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yes, he said he, he thought you had made very good efforts and uh, that uh, he supports it and felt that we, since it's what's called a non-contributing structure, even though in a designated historic area, that we should be lenient. Yeah, I love that area, it's, and I wish I can do what, what we're trying to do because otherwise uh, we have to plan to move because the house is really small to have yes. a family. Yes. And we have a big land. And, mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Um, let me start with you, Robert. Um, first of all, thank you for coming back with that. Um, thank you. Plans are, I think, 100 times better than when we saw them last time, I like how everything is fine, is lining up, especially it didn't quite match up with the living room and so forth. I like how it's all kind of flows very nicely. Um, I think one of the things that Dean was having a problem with was the one window, and that's going to be open now. Um, can you go back to the picture of the side? I, I seem to, and I'm not going to hold on, and can you go to the drawing? Had, Correct me if I'm wrong. Did we talk about everything matching that top window? 
I know we can. We were having a conversation. I'm yes, sure. and the applicant had indicated a willingness, if needs be, to either make it smaller or raise it. Okay, and and that's not going to affect. I just I, I remember we had talked about that. Those look obviously a little wider than what we were speaking of before, but I I think it's great. I have no real issues. It sounds like you're gaining 44 square feet. So there you go. Yeah. Uh, and then obviously I want. All the the roof to match, you know, whatever your the staff's guidelines are in regards to any stormwater management, obviously. But uh, no, I, I well done. I I think it looks great. Yeah. Um, with the roof, even with the siding too. I know we have a, a big plan to do, but I love the area. I love the house. So the plan is if we do the addition and do the work. In the future, we're gonna change the roof too because the roof, I, the all the entire house roof, need to be changed. So we wanted to have a beautiful place, family to live. So that's why we're trying to work around. And, and I want to mention about the um, the picture of the windows. Mm -hmm. um, can you put the pictures in the new edition? The drawing the of the room. Uh, it's two windows attached, mm -hmm. but now that I see um, in the drawing, I think it's the next one. And yeah, the but, two yeah. windows attached will be in the bedroom. Um, I don't know if should I leave it like that or I can put separate because I think in that if I put a I, a bed there, mm -hmm. I don't want the windows be there. So if I put it separate, the bed can be in the middle instead of the windows behind the bed. So if should I leave it like that, the two windows, or I can put one in each corner. I mean, to me, that that's your own. That'd be your call on that. How you want? Yeah, you know, but I ask because it's already on the drawing. In case mm -hmm. I decide, like when they are building it, is there any problem if yeah. I decide the last minute? We we can put a, a clarification to allow that. Oh. So, so you want to Actually, my questions were about the windows. Right. Yeah. But, but before we go further, thank you for your integrity here. Basically saying, look, I'm really not sure, mm -hmm. and I, I don't want you to be looking at this and thinking it's locked in stone. So really thank you for bringing that yeah. to our attention. Being so I was thinking, I was so scared saying, oh, it's already drawing there in case. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. No, we're... We, one of the things as a commission, uh, we want this to be a place where you and all applicants feel we are working together in partnership. Yeah, thank you. That, to have it work. Yeah. So that's the only comment I had. <laughs> My turn? Okay. Yes. Um, if you can go, Chris, uh, back two slides, I think, to the front, draw of the front elevation. I'm a little concerned about the the window on the the far right and uh, just how that's going to actually work with the roof line structurally I think just you're going to find your uh, your ceiling is going to be lower than that um, just even if it's a pitch ceiling just because of you have the the joists for the for the roof we're going to kind of interfere with that so I think that will go with or uh, we can leave only one window no I like two. I like having two windows I think the roof has to be adjusted oh okay. um, I think the windows work well, and they, 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 I think you need two there. Um, what about banking the windows and removing the shutters? You could potentially that do that, yeah. Give her more room. It just right now, room. the structurally, it's going, you're going to have a, your, your structure is going to impede onto the top of that window. So if you perhaps, like Dean was saying, put the windows together in the middle, then you could, could make that work. Oh, okay. So that's one comment. And, um, and I do agree um, with staff in terms of the, the roof lines. It's just, it's not, not quite working. To, oh, because to, the window is closer to the corner. That's yeah. why it can be closer yeah. to the center. If you push everything yeah. together, yeah. Yeah. it may work. Yeah. Or, you, or potentially raise the roof up a little yeah. bit. Raising. Yeah, if we could raise the roof a little bit more, and it would be better. Well, we trouble with that. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, no. I mean, if you if you change your window, but the, you would be surprised if you do raise it, and the construction costs are essentially going to be the same. 
the room will feel much, much, much bigger yeah. down below. But there may be some issues with um, how that ties into the existing building. That's sure. This picture right up yeah. on the screen is my concern. That's not to say this is the only way to right. handle this, but raising the pitch of that roof would have the roof line go above the existing uh, right. eave and yep. or be break, I should say. So there's, yeah. I think there's, I think there's a solution out there for to I make it so work too. for the for the plan that you have, the floor plan that you have. But right now, I think that that uh, shed roof is is going to be a little, little problematic, um, and how that shed roof ties into the, uh, to the to the master bedroom roof line. There's a, a there's, and and how that the pitch of the master bedroom fights a little bit against the, the pitch of the existing structure. Um, so I think there's it it should be either more subordinate or um, in, lined up in a different manner to kind of almost. I don't think you'd want to match the match that pitch. It's a it's a it's a really steep roof, but I think there's some ways to make it feel more compatible. Um, can you go to the the floor plan real quick? I think there's uh, two things with it. I think the what you had said about the master the master bedroom with the windows. Mm -hmm. I completely agree with you from a from a layout standpoint. If you spread those windows, um, it, your your furniture will fit much nicer in that space. Um, yeah, because if I put that bed mm -hmm. in the middle, yeah. I won't be able to go to that window. Exactly. Yeah. So I would I would definitely recommend spreading it out um, like you were suggesting. The other the, the window in the uh, in the living room extension. Mm -hmm. um, is there any reason why it can't align with the window above? This window here. Lots of questions about that too, because in the last match, it's sure. Oh, it can be the same line. Nope. Yeah. The oh, last. Yeah, that's not a problem. We can. Go ahead. When we met the last time, we discussed uh, breaking up the mass with windows, mm -hmm. and so my expectation was we were going to see something with more windows on this part of the addition. Anyway. Yeah, I would prefer that if, but I understand. Um, I think. I agree with you. I think more windows along that along mm -hmm. that um, side would would be nice, both from a, a feel of the inside space plus how I look on the exterior, just like you have yes. currently in that. Yes. Uh, in the existing edition, you have the bank of three windows that um, works well from a from a um, massing standpoint of the building. It it looks good on the on the building, um, but all, overall, I'm in favor of. I missed the last meeting, so I didn't get to weigh in on the original design, but all in all, all in all the plan I'm in favor of. I think the roof lines and those those details can be worked out with staff, and so you can get your addition. Yeah, okay. <laughs> there you go. Really, my only concern was the windows and the massing on this side that we're looking at right now. Um, and I was really gonna ask Dean about that because I remembered it was important to you to break up the massing, and what do you now think of this? Massing and is definitely broken up uh, so much more so than it was. Mm -hmm, it was just mm -hmm. long and, and, and low. Um, so uh, I'm delighted that you had your architect uh, make those adjustments. It's wonderful. I think the massing is a whole lot more conducive or appropriate for your style house yeah. uh, but I don't want to start talking to take it away from you so no I would please. like you to actually because I need with I don't have any architectural background but I'm feeling that maybe more than one window on this side would be appropriate I think visually the side elevation I agree um, and the living room would be nicer if it had a double or two windows uh, it's a side elevation so I'm not really very concerned um, and I'm real sensitive about lack of a better term going too often to the well that is we already asked you to do stuff yeah. and you were so kind to do it that I am of the mindset to have you get whatever you're looking for in this design so I want to approve what your what your need you know your design is what your needs are and I love the idea that you're going to get your living room straight across that made me feel very happy that that was your biggest concern thank biggest you goal. yeah and, you're, and we're, you've achieved that and I'm going to vote absolutely vote for that 
Um, I do agree that the roof massing is a little bit different than I was envisioning, and so I do think it would be nice for staff to work on it with, with, some, with you on that. Um, I am also of the mindset that the windows, to me, I'd like to give you, in my personal opinion, and I want to present it to you guys, to have you have the most flexibility on the living room windows, both on the front of the addition and the side of the addition. And what I mean by that is, as well as your master bedroom, I would like to propose, as far as uh, in our um, um, uh, thoughts, to have a clarification to allow her, to allow you, to either have those windows in the uh, living room addition and the master bedroom addition to be either banked together or separated yeah. with or without shutters. I'd like you to have that flexibility because I would find it acceptable on any of those scenarios. And that's really cool. I think with that, uh, I'd like to kind of have a minimum window count. Um, that's up to you guys. So again, I don't want to push too yeah. much. Um, well, be there, she's showing five five windows along those two elevations. Sure. Maintain the five, and you can have more if you'd like. I don't think we'd be a. But idea. I have it in the other side to mm -hmm. the jar. I have in another window. No, yeah, I'm just talking about those two. Tools. Yeah. So right. that's why I, I don't want to have a lot of windows. Right. I right. count total would be around seven right. windows. I think we could tie that in with the, a bit of what's going on with the roof too. Maybe say right. you know, per mm, right. staff recommendation, something to that effect. Right. Okay. I just don't want to, I don't want a subtraction of windows. Then right. I don't mind if exactly. the, the same number stays. I would, mm. and if you want to add more, that's I think that's great. I just don't think we want to take away any windows from what you no, have. No, the yeah. windows yeah. that they are there, I agree that they mm. can be yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. Well. Um, I, I just I, I want to really add, agree with and add a bit to what the commissioners have said. Uh, thank you again for your efforts to try and accommodate the suggestions which we made, which are all in favor of you having a wonderfully beautiful and wonderfully functional house. And yeah. I think what we're saying um, is in light of your evident good faith efforts we want to give you maximum flexibility uh, i defer the two architects i mean i've built a lot of stuff but i'm an amateur and we call them field changes so you could have something on paper and when you really get to it it's like oh my gosh it would make so much sense if we move this door six inches to the right or the left or whatever and we we want to grant you working with staff that flexibility um the only, uh, uh, I agree with uh, Commissioner Feinstein on the, that shed roof from the front, and I think there are some ways you can play with it, but uh, adjusting that pitch, even though you, you'd have to do some adjusting of the other gables, I think would really help you because you really take away from the beauty of the front facade with that thing so flat. I think if you, raise it up and give it more of a pitch the house is really going to yeah honor itself but uh, one last thing uh, commissioner ventola at our last meeting did a sketch and i don't know if you ever got it because it was i thought brilliant so all i would for for my part here would if it's still floating around if we could give it to you or if not if you could mm -hmm. recreate it I so it. when you yeah. sit down and look at it and, and work with Chris because it, it again, I'm no architect, uh, but it seems so visually pleasing and it seems so efficient, it seemed to me from a building standpoint, that you might want to have it in front of you for your consideration. I'll be happy to sketch it up. And yeah, if you can provide it to staff and Absolutely. then staff could mm -hmm. uh, translate it to her. No problem whatsoever. Yeah, we did it like that because Sometimes when you don't have much ideas, you do what best you think it could be. Well, exactly. But and many Chris, ideas. Chris, Chris and I talked about this, and uh, it's it. I mean, I'm in the same boat you are as a non-architect, and also standing there and then trying to remember. But unless I have it in front of me visually on paper and hand it to somebody, say, there. Um, I mean, how could you possibly explain? And, and then your architect is going to say, well, is it a this or a that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yes. 
Okay, well, commissioners, what is your <coughs> pleasure? Um, I can certainly make a motion. Okay. Uh, but are we okay? It sounds like we are with the clarification that um, the applicant can adjust the windows and the shutters for those two rooms. Everybody's okay with that? Yes. Okay. As long as none are removed. Right. Right. Actually, what is the count? We have five windows? Yes. Five. Let's put that in then. Minimum five windows. Okay. okay. All right. So here's does, does this have. make, I just want to explain what we're doing here. We're um, trying to say, okay. don't. We love what you're doing. We want to give you flexibility to make it even better. Um, there are six. And play with your windows, but don't take any away. No, I think there are six or seven windows because in the back, like I have in the closet, I have one in the closet. And in the back of the house, I have one six, in seven. the porch. Yeah. There are right. seven windows in total. I, I think, do we want to clarify, Just I, we're just talking about the, the new front edition and the side edition, so maybe we'll say, let's clarify the front and side edition. I think edition. that's more appropriate. Yeah. That is, Those are the prominent. Yeah. You're okay with the, with the side and, and, the, and the, or let's say the back and, and left side, if you wanted to adjust those. We're not concerned about those. It's just the ones that face the front road and the side. So yeah. we're just going to say the five, and then the others, you can have seven with two more in the back if you like. Yeah, okay. thank but you. That gives you most flexibility <laughs> yeah. is what I'm saying, yeah. which is my, my, yeah. my goal. Exactly. All right, um, so it sounds like we have um, a staff recommendation with two conditions uh, and then one clarification, and it will read as follows. <coughs> uh, I move that the Historic District Commission, based on the exhibits submitted and the staff report findings and recommendation grant HIST 77 47-2017, 668 square foot addition. Is that still the correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, with porch and siding replacement, finding it to be in compliance with section 24-227.2 of the city code with two conditions. Condition one is applicant to work with staff to revise the roofs to cover the living room addition, bedroom and closet addition, and rear porch so they are compatible with the structure and surrounding area prior to submission of the residential improvement permit application. Uh, condition number two, that for the front and side elevation of the living room and the right side elevation of the bedroom, and I should say living room addition and bedroom addition, that there will be uh, t uh, no less than five windows uh, on those two elevations, similar to what you have now. Uh, then I'd like to add a clarification, and it is as follows, that um, the applicant can keep the living room and master bedroom addition windows, uh, A, as shown currently on your drawings, being separate with or without shutters, or banked together with or without shutters. So that's A is, uh, the first is I shown them separate, and B is is banked together. And so that will give you, uh, in that period, that will then give you the ability to bank them together uh, on the front elevation of the living room addition, um, bank them together, oh, I'm sorry, separate them on the bedroom side uh, addition, or even add another window or two and bank them together or separate them. And you can have them with or without shutters. It's okay. your call. Okay, thank you. Just a second. Second. All just by way of, just, just before you do that, just by way of clarification, would it be better the second item you were talking about mm -hmm. It's really less a condition as more a comment, giving her that flexibility. If that could just be phrased, that in your clarification, both as comments that are added. The second rather does, than conditions. Say, does say five minimum, though, so that makes it a condition because of the five minimum. That's right. The quantity of windows is the five minimum. That's the condition. Okay. So there's two conditions. One is what staff showed to uh, uh, work with the applicant on the roofing. The second um, uh, condition is minimum five. It's the minimum numbers. five. I understand what you're saying. Then, then I separated that and had a clarification Understood. for the applicant to have the flexibility. No, just, just, uh, just addressing the conversation here. So that's no, thank you, thank you, Mike, for being vigilant. We're we're lucky to have I withdraw <laughs> all the good staff support we have. Sure. Okay, is that, Frank, does that, that make entirely sense? Entirely. Okay. Yeah, I think you've explained. Uh, have we a second? Yeah, I second. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So thank you so much. Congratulations. Congratulations. And uh, we really appreciate 
you coming and uh, thank you. Thank and, you, and Paul. We, uh, again, if you will take a look at what Commissioner Ventola will give to uh, Mr. Berger, I think he'll be pleased. And uh, it is our job always to support an applicant in having what they want in a way that, that works for the rest of the uh, environment in which, which, which their, their house is located and its compatibility with the other houses. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you, and I'm so happy that you can help me with that. It's my pleasure. Example. It really is. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, we get to come to the house where we party. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Uh, Chris, where do you want me to go from here? Uh, let's do you want go me back to the end and come back to Kent. Let's go. But let's go to three two one Kent Square. Okay. Road next. All right, we're going back to three two one Kent Square Road uh, with some window and door replacements. So, Chris, have you a presentation? Yes. The Kentland's Carriage House is a one-story Colonial Revival-style building that was constructed circa 1920. The property is zoned MXD, mixed use development, and is individually designated. The historic area work permit comes before the HDC in accordance with section 24-227A of the city code. The applicant, the Kentland Citizens Assembly, requests the HDC approve the replacement of all eight windows and all four doors. According to the applicant, all the windows are either fixed or non-operable, so they would like windows that function. The doors have suffered wear and tear, and the applicant would like more aesthetically pleasing fenestration. This is a photo of the carriage house in about 1960. Note that the garage doors are now windows and doors, so there's four bays. It was converted into the Kentlands Citizens Assembly Building in about 2000 when the garage doors were removed and replaced with these windows and doors in each of the four bays on the front elevation. Here is a representative photo of the front elevation where there are 15 light doors and 16 light fixed windows. And here is a bay with a 15 light door and an eight light fixed window. And this is the rear elevation and these are two over two wood sash windows. And these windows appear to be original to the building's construction. The applicant proposes to replace these windows with two over two windows um, similar in appearance to the existing. And here's a close-up view of one of the existing rear windows. The applicant said the windows do not open and are not energy efficient. Staff encouraged the applicant to retain and repair these windows and directed them to lists of window restore restoration craftsmen. Staff also encouraged the applicant to install storm windows. The applicant seeks to install Wood Pella Proline 450 series windows. Uh, the 16 light fixed windows on the front elevation and the two over two wood sash windows on the rear elevation would re be replaced with these two over two sash windows. And the pair of eight light fixed windows on the front elevation will be replaced with four light casement windows. All windows will be painted white. As for the doors, it is the applicant's preference that the new doors be fiberglass with wood veneer. They have also offered to install doors made completely of wood. The panels could be recessed or raised. The Historic District Design Guidelines for the Brooks Russell and Walker Historic District and individually designated historic sites apply. Under House Design Elements, note the first bullet point that states new, additional, or replacement construction work on existing houses should be compatible with the historical design elements. Under materials, the first bullet states, the historic character of a property shall be retained and preserved. The removal of historic materials or alteration of features and spaces that characterize a property shall be avoided. And under doors, the first bullet, any doors visible from the street should be of wood and <coughs> in the style of the house. And there's a lot of information under windows, so I'll summarize that original windows um, are significant and should be repaired rather than replaced. 
Um, no representative from the Kentland Citizens Assembly was able to attend tonight because they have a meeting going on right now as well. So <laughs> probably I in that very space. <laughs> probably. I shared with them the staff recommendation and offered to delay the HDC's review to a future meeting date when someone could attend, but they asked that you review in their absence because they would like to move forward with this project as soon as possible. So does anyone have any questions? Uh, let me check and make sure there are, are, are there any conflicts here? No. no. Uh, any yeah. comments from the audience? Okay, then, Dean, let me start with you. Yeah, um, can you put up, I guess, the picture of the old house? I mean, the, old, the garage as it was. Oh, there you go. There we go. And, um, when I was looking at the current elevation, and then I noticed, because it was on um, in our documents, um, right under this photo, it just looked clear to me, and if you can now change uh, to the uh, current, do you have one with a bigger shot? There you go. I wondered when I looked at this where the architect, if it was an architect, let's say designer or whomever, came up with the idea of the um, grid pattern in those windows, mm -hmm. and particularly in the doors. And when I saw the existing garage doors with the grid pattern so strong, my guess is that's what was an influence here. So I, even though this is not historic, because I think it was built in 1960. This was place? built in 1920. 1920. No, I'm sorry, the, the doors. In the, 2000, the, the I think. Uh, the doors were done in about 2000. Okay, so 15 to 17 years ago. So it's not historic, ago. so it's not like um, we need to worry about that. Now, I will say this. If this was 50 or 60 years old, I would be fighting for it, because to me, that was... A, a direct intention and it really respected the original uh, design but because it was done so recently it's not that's it's not, we just can't go fight for everything but here's what I am thinking is um, when I was looking trying to figure out the windows that are being proposed well first let me say the rear elevation those four windows uh, to remain uh, because they're historic I am in support of that that they should be remain they should remain and be repaired but for the new ones that are being proposed in the front, um, I can say this. I tend to think that, um, except for the, the, the applicant wanted to move forward fast on this, I believe we really need to see an elevation of what is being proposed. Because the windows that are being proposed are very different from each other and the door itself. And I'm worried about the proportions being uh, whack, whack uh, uh, off. <laughs> Not quite yes. right. So um, there is a, a door that's going to be half light next to a um, double hung window, which is next to a casement window. And none of the lights or the, the, the muntins within them will align with each other. And it'll mm. look to be a, a technical term as mishmash. <laughs> That's the one I was worried I was trying not to say. Um, so I've got big concerns about that. So um, if they're in a rush, um, I don't want to delay it if we can figure out what's going on. Can you put up, Chris, the, um, I guess the front elevation to, um, yeah, that shows the just a bigger breadth of it. There you go. Um, I think what they're saying is the, the doors are all going to be the half light, and they're only going to be, I think, from my memory, two over two. Can, can you can you put up the door? Sure. Uh, that's your plate. Yeah. So look at the proportion of the windows, the glass. Mm -hmm. um, so then go to, I guess, the next window or the next thing. Now look at the proportion of those lights. Um, these are strips. They're they're. Mm -hmm foreign to the, um, the doors, um, um, uh, lights, or, or, or glass. And then go to the next one, and again, you've got something next to something next to something that Ooh. just doesn't work. And one is a double hung next to a casement next to a, a half 
light door. So I think visually they're going to look a little bit off. The other thing that I wanted to draw for is I'm not really sure of the size of all this stuff. Until you draw it, you're taking guesses. Mm -hmm. um, but um, that's up to us if we say we have to have one. We can talk about that. But if we say no to that, then I would suggest that we take the double hung and switch it to two banked casements, uh, which would be the casement one, which is only 17 inches wide, and bank two of them together, and then you'd have three casements near each other, and visually that would make a little bit of sense. Then I would take the muntins and dramatically change them, make them be um, probably either um, um, two over two over twos, and do the same thing with the half light on the, on the doors, but make them be compatible, because right now you've got things that are just so far different from each other. So that's my only comment. Thank you, Dean. You're welcome. Mary Jo. Well, I am support of retaining the rear windows as well. It's very likely that they were simply painted shut, and I'm sure that those can be cleaned. They look, at least from the photographs, to be in pretty good condition. And um, I agree with what Dean is saying about the proportions of the new windows, and we need to look at that. Right. Um, I have a question, actually, uh, for Frank, uh, because part of what I, I, Dean, you stole my thunder, um, <laughs> so, but, it, but, but it leads to a question, because um, your second point of where you were getting at when you started to actually redesign some of it, I don't think we have that ability with, with no applicant here. We can't just approve something with a condition that we're completely changing what they intend to do. Mm. Um, you can <clears throat> you can add a general condition such as the window panes need to match or or something like that. You certainly can, but in terms of completely redesigning it with a, with a saying this one, this one, yeah. and this one doesn't work, um, that's probably something you you'd more want to lead to staff anyway, and that would be. Uh, among other things, difficult to write into a condition, but something that does, what I'm hearing is the concern is the compatibility of the size, that the size of, size of the panes yeah. do need to match. Yeah. Size is Depending on what you and what styles. you want to approve, yeah. that would yeah. be yeah. Uh, that would be simple enough to. Because even to if they include. do match a casement next to a double hung, it's going to look different. Mm -hmm. It can't help but look different. Yeah. They just the the horizontal bars just make it different. I, um, I should say sash is yeah. the proper term. Do we need a drawing? I mean, that's really my question to, to everybody. I, and could we even defer this because we can't defer them without, without them you, here? You can defer yeah. the application without them here, and um, especially if you do wish to speak to the applicant on this and have specific questions for them, I think but, deferment would be acceptable. But didn't you offer that and they denied right. it? Right. Well, you don't you have somebody standing by by phone? <laughs> no. no, I mean truly, I no. thought that when you and I spoke before the meeting, I thought somebody was phone available as needed. No. Sta okay. Wow. Staff did. Oh, make it aware to them that it was an option that the commission could defer tonight without them being here um and they did they did understand that so again i, I do okay. believe it would be okay if they're okay uh, yeah I mean, again, if the commission has if they're looking if you are as a commission are looking for additional drawings or you yeah. feel the applicant needs to be here to answer some questions yeah. you guys have for them i think okay. deferment firm it would be, be be the way to handle it and I think it's, I if think you, it's appropriate to say that the application is not complete yeah, agree. Yes, I agree. Okay, that I was going to say, if you could say the application is not complete, uh, partly because of what you're saying, the, the need for the elevations, that might be appropriate. But if you simply wanted to defer based on the discussions, I would want the chance. I would actually ask you to defer this and maybe talk about the fourth one in the row to give me a chance just to see. Every time I assume I understand exactly the wording of, the, of a statute, it turns out I miss a word. So I'd want to see the exact wording of the statute that says, after a certain period of time, I believe it's 45 days, if, there, if there's no action that it's taken, it's granted. I just want to make, make sure what that says. But an incomplete application. Yes. 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 Absolutely. Yes. Yes. The record reflects that. Yes. And if indeed, in good faith, we feel we can't exactly. provide an informed That's opinion, right. whether okay. approval, disapproval, conditions, okay. then that is appropriate. We simply don't have enough information 
to, to do our job on your behalf, applicant, as well as on behalf of our job for the city. That's right. With that being said, I think it's um, with, the, with regard to the rear windows, the existing uh, historic windows, I think we can rule on that tonight. And I also wanted to clarify, too, okay. that the new door would be made of wood. Okay. That well, is, that is in here, right? Is that, that was a staff, uh, that was a staff um, right. recommendation. And that's a good point. I didn't bring that up. I'm glad you did. I agree with that. Right. Mark, anything else? No, I don't know. Robert? Robert? Uh, I guess <laughs> I kind of know where we're leaning here. So can, can you just go back to what it looks like now? I just want to check out something. Do you know if they indicated why they weren't just going to do the same exact look to it? Because I kind of I, I like where Dean was going with that, how it looks the, very similar to what it was. The mentality was to try, and I don't know if I have any photos in the packet, the tr to try to match the doors that are on the arts barn. Um, the arts barn has, as you can sort of see in this photo, two over two windows, but these aren't original, mm -hmm. and then they have doors that are what they propose, four lights yeah. with um, with oh, panels. Okay. So let me see if I have any photos in the they packet that show that. They were trying to bring a continuity between right. the were trying to the yeah. okay. They were trying to match what was there, and I believe there's a similar design at the DPZ office, which is to the rear of this building. But I don't know if I have uh, photos in Okay, but the that, was, that was in the back of their minds, perhaps. Right. Okay. Maybe you could just Google the building, like a. I know I have photos. Okay. If I don't have them in the packet, I can pull them up. But that was their. Um, that was their thoughts. Was their thought? Okay. Um, I kind of like how it looks now, actually. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I am. Uh, I'm in favor of, of, you know, deferring the part, you know, until we do get a complete application. Okay. Ah, there you go. Ah, right. So this there is what are. is on the arts barn. And this is what we recommended that they try to emulate. Oh, okay. I didn't match in the old picture, but yeah, <laughs> the two, but that's okay. But their denying did not show that crisscross on the bottom. Right. right. There was just, just like not. A, yeah, I didn't think No, it that. showed a raised panel. And it was hard to and tell the proportions of it. Yeah, it's impossible. Mm-hmm. Okay, Robert. Uh, I am, uh, other than that, I am in favor of them keeping the rear windows. I think if they're still good functioning windows and there's nothing wrong with them, I don't see any reason why you would get rid of them. All right, well, uh, let me back, but I, I want to bracket this discussion for just a second and move back to just a, did in our approval, did we approve the siding? That's, it all of a sudden hit me as we're talking about the details here. Yes. We did, we did include that? Correct. Good. All right. Great. Uh, well then, uh, let me just agree with everything uh, that has been said here tonight. By all means, keep the back windows. Uh, secondly, we cannot make an informed choice uh, for the good of the applicant or for the good of the city. And so we respectfully uh, uh, ask them to please put together some portrayal mm -hmm. of how the front will look with the doors which they propose and the, the different sets of windows which they propose so we can uh, make a professional uh, uh, assessment on, uh, as a commission on behalf of the city. I will give them that information. Let me, uh, let me, I think we can get there um, because what you're saying makes sense, but we have to follow what what our code says. And there's a 24227D3, um, uh, um, it refers to a acting within the 45 days from a completed application. And completed application, you're, it's tempting to say, okay, it's not completed, but completed uh, references the filing. Once it's accepted for filing, it's considered completed. Mm -hmm. The option, however, or in the event the record is held open by the commission within 15 days after the close of the record. So it is, my advice would be, based on what you're saying, it sounds like this is 
could be considered an incomplete application or additional information is needed for which reason the record would be held open. Mm, yes. At least until um, <laughs> should indicate the next meeting uh, would be when this would then be on the agenda um, and then move forward from there. Can, yes. can we make, thank, thank you, Frank. Can we and make any, I'm sorry, Chris. No, no, you go ahead. Uh, can we make any sort of, can we do the second part about denying or do we want well, to not touch anything right now? I would not touch anything because if we, if you do make pass any motion approving a portion of this, then they would that have would, to come forward with a brand exactly, new application. Exactly. Oh, the record mm. yes, it's like waving, waving the Fifth Amendment on one question. You've, you've waved it across <laughs> the board. Well, and it, it is better since you have a single application, treat it as a single application. Um, certainly can let them know in terms of the rear windows. Right. But so, uh, but the important thing is keeping the record open so on the whole Frank, application. In this instance, could you help us? Should it be a motion, and could you help us with the language of it? Yeah, your my 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 suggestion would be um, explain the need uh, for more information uh, from the applicant, and the motion tr should reference the need to keep the record open, um, and that uh, the record would be held open at least until. The next scheduled meeting, which I guess would be the December meeting or November meeting, we're still in October. Yeah. We haven't had Thanksgiving yet. Sorry. It'd be the November twenty sixth. Or, oh yeah, you're right. 29th, my fault. That's right. It is shifted to November twenty ninth. Yes. So Thanks. Thanks. yes. Grab it. Thanksgiving. Okay. Chris, do you have enough? And can you work with Frank on that? And can we? As a, now, this is a little odd, but. Can if you want to say move, I move what he said, that's fine. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's what he said. Perfect. I was going to try to do it, but I think this that is the media better. staff. <laughs> yes. Yep. Okay. So, what he said, the crystal massage. Maybe we have a motion for that. Okay. Then we're going to say. So am I going to say anything, or just no? Say, just say yes. I make that motion. That. I make and that motion. Have a second. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good. Make you guys earn your soul. Excellent. All right, Chris, now we have something else working. I know we have a number four. Where okay. is number four? Ah, Here. Summit Avenue. The clock. The clock. The History Park at 5 South Summit Avenue is located in between the B&O Railroad Station and the Community Museum. The property is zoned CBD, Central Business District, and it is individually designated. The Historic Area Work Permit comes before the HDC in accordance with Section 24-227A of the City Code. The applicant seeks the installation of a commem commemorative clock in History Park. Uh, the clock will commemorate business owner Leonard Katz, who owned Wolfson's Department Store in Old Town for many years. And the clock will be placed approximately where this bush is right now. Uh, for reference, the History Park sign back here is approximately nine feet tall. Um, a previous clock was dedicated to Katz after his death in 1984 and was located about 150 feet to the north of the proposed location in what is now the Old Town Plaza. The clock repeatedly malfunctioned and was removed approximately 15 years ago. The city has the original clock in storage, but a number of parts are missing and it has been deemed too cost prohibitive to restore. The applicant proposes the installation of a small two-dial uh, Howard Street clock. And here's an example here. The proposed clock will be placed on a concrete footer in an existing planter, and it will replace that bush that we saw earlier. The clock will be built of aluminum and measure 10 feet, 8 and 3 eighths inches tall. The double-sided clock face at the top will measure two feet, five and a half inches wide and will be LED lit. The clock will be painted red with gold accents to match the medallion on the locomotive, which is right behind it. Uh, the lettering at the top will read Gaithersburg in gold lettering. A dedication plaque to Leonard Katz will be placed at the, on the clock after installation. And this is a representative photo of a small two-dial Howard Street clock that shows um, approximately what it would look like. 
History Park is located within, M within an MHT easement, a Maryland Historical Trust easement. So should the HDC approve the historic area work permit, the Maryland Historical Trust easement committee will need to review placement of the clock. And before I open it up for discussion, we're gonna try something new and we have a video of the History Park and to give you an idea of exactly where it's located. So we're walking down the steps, there's the locomotive, and this is History Park Plaza, the paved brick area, and the clock will be located right over here at this, where this bush is located. And there's that sign, as I mentioned, it's about nine feet tall, so the clock will be um, approximately 10 feet tall. So do we have any questions? Okay, have we any any conflicts? Anyone yeah. from the audience wish to speak? Well, um, I'm an HDC commissioner for the city. I just wanted to point that out. <laughs> but I don't think that's any conflict with the applicant. Okay. <laughs> I think we're all in that boat. <laughs> uh, let's see. I think we're back to your end. Okay. Um, I have a couple of thoughts. Um, one is, the clock itself is two-faced, and so is it going to be um, parallel to the railroad tracks or perpendicular to the railroad tracks? Uh, my understanding that it would be parallel to the railroad tracks. So it can be seen from both, and I'll go back to the photo, so it can be seen from the Old Town Plaza and from the uh, walkway here. That brings me to my next thought. Um, when I was in school, um, we had a, a architecture school. We had a project where um, I had a giant plaza with a high rise, and I and there was talk about a clock for a former mayor, Del Sandro, back in Baltimore. So I placed it in the building, and the instructor, who I don't really agree with, said that it needs to be high, tall, so the entire city can see it. Well. I disagree because the Bromo Seltzer clock does that. But, my, but it's leading to my point. Um, I have a big concern of where it's located really isn't going to be seen by many people other than those right within History Park. So is there a possibility, was it ever discussed to put it perhaps right outside the, the plaza where more people, people traveling down Summit Avenue or when you have parades, you know, the parades down Summit or um, uh, they take over the parking lot. It would just be more, more visual to more people be more useful there, thereby. So that's, that's my only thought on that. And then my last thought is um, I like the color scheme red and gold, uh, it's very festive, very carnival-like. I, I think that that works, except that um, I don't like red uh, objects in front of uh, orangey red brick building. And I just am concerned with the visual clash. So I'm wondering, is it, uh, uh, my thoughts are, would the, the city, um, is this mayor and council who's picking the colors? Mm. Whomever, whomever, right. I would recommend the black and gold or the uh, dark green and gold. Uh, I think those would work very well. If you can put the picture up of the building it's sitting in front of, it would work very well with that color scheme. I think the red, uh, I hate to use the word clash, but that's the only word that comes to mind on that. Those are my only thoughts. Well, I agree with you that I think the red would probably wash out because of the brick, and there's too much red going on. I also was curious as to the placement of the clock because I remember when the original clock was put up, it was more central at the corner. So you you knew you were in Old Town at that time and it was also a gathering place during the Labor Day parades and different things. So why is it tucked back here and not so much a centralized focus on the clock anymore. It, we, it was discussed a number of different locations, but it was felt that this was most appropriate um, because of its historic designation and its location. And the history park itself, it would be an appropriate location for a commemorative clock that is as is what is proposed. As you can remember, this whole area is undergoing redevelopment yes. as uh, yes. Old Town Plaza, so that wasn't a possibility. Mm -hmm. So we were limited in area, and History Park seemed the most appropriate location. Okay. Thank you. 
right? Um, I have issues with uh, with the color primarily. Other than that, I love the the look of the clock. I think it's going to be that great. It's going to be great for the for the city. Yeah. Um, it's just a. Uh, I think um, the, the the color scheme that was shown that's shown in the example um, with the dark uh, color would look so much better. Yeah, um, that that one would, that that color scheme I think would look so much more appropriate. With the, the, with the, the black. Yeah, the drain is, the drain yeah. is black. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And it would look great against the uh, against the building. I agree. I couldn't agree more. You pop more. That's mm -hmm. what I have. Okay. Um, I agree with the color scheme. I like this one a lot better. I don't know if. Um, are we allowed to talk about color? I know we can't speak about it on anything you're, else. You're welcome to talk about it. I can talk about it, but whoa, it'd be listened to. Uh, no, that, I actually, I like the placement of it. I think it is appropriate for the historic park. I kind of was hoping they wouldn't put a clock in the other, the park plaza. I kind of said, hopefully they wouldn't, and they didn't. So I actually like the, the placement and, and how it's facing, so I have no problem with that. But. I would say if they'll take our suggestion, I would say the, the maybe the color scheme could maybe match the uh, not not blend so much with the brick building. Right. Um, it's our recommendation, even there though we go. can't enforce it. Okay. <laughs> right. Uh, I I agree with with everything that's been said. Either uh, that very dark forest green and gold, mm -hmm. which is very traditional. Uh, I think that would pop even more. Uh, the black next to the train is going to disappear into the train, but uh, definitely not the red. Uh, and the other thing, and it's just a thought, uh, maybe if it really is going to be an homage, if it could be back in the location of the old clock, but that's just me. And so this location is fine. Uh, but I uh, appreciate D Dean looking into the detail of, you know, really that it's going to be set really parallel to diamonds so that you know we can be seeing it from both sides so this okay. is but a it's almost like a courtesy review recommendations well somewhere. you are providing a, making a motion mm -hmm. we should be making yes motions. Yeah. okay well who would like to make a motion I'll give it a shot okay I move the historic district commission based on the exhibit submitted and the staff report findings and recommendations grant HIST Dash seven seven four one dash two zero one seven clock installation history park, finding it to be in compliance with section twenty four dash two two seven dot two of the city code, with no real conditions but a suggestion that the colors be changed to um, not clash with the orange brick building behind it. I, as a friendly amendment to that, you know, i.e., dark forest green or mm -hmm. black. Sure. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Very good, thank you. Uh, now how about, and, and really before we go further, thank you. I mean really the, the, the preparation you guys do and the thinking you guys do, uh, I really appreciate. I hope the applicants appreciate it. They aren't always wildly thrilled with what we do, but I don't, I don't know that anybody really uh, is more professional than you all, and I feel why you keep electing me chair, I don't know, but it's really an honor. Uh, staff updates. Um, I distributed calendars for 2018, and thank you. Other than that, just to wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving because we will meet next after that holiday. So, okay. happy right. Thanksgiving to all. Oh, thank all right. you. Me too. Now, uh, commission updates. Well, I have something. Okay, good. Uh, I, D knows this because his email was flooded. Uh, I represent you on the Maryland Association of Historic District Commissioners. Uh, they have an annual meeting each year. Part of that is a social. Uh, Mostly, they end up in the northern part of the state. Frederick, Baltimore, Cecil County, and going elsewhere. Uh, I live in Washington Grove, which is a very interesting piece of the history of Maryland, starting in 1873 with a, 
a Methodist church revival that caught on. Uh, they sold tent lots in 1939 and incorporated, and we are one of a handful of places in the state. We have our own mayor, town council, zoning, and uh, planning authority. Um, so we, the women's club there is going to host, along with our H. PC, they have a Historic Preservation Commission which is advisory only. It has no dispositive authority. Um, and there will be, uh, a social will be providing, you know, beverages and nibbles and this and that. However, for this commission, uh, we're going to be having a business meeting which precedes the, the social part. And the social part is going to have a presentation from the Women's Club that, that uh, formed in, I think it was 56, and then from the chair of our HDC, or their HDC, uh, HPC, excuse me, uh, Bob Boer, the history of the town was very, very interesting. But uh, I don't believe any of you have ever seen the Kurtz House, which is uh, started in 1882, um, as part of a, th these were all tents, and then they turned into cottages. And when I mean they were tents, they were 14 foot tents, <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 29 feet long. And over time, as people would, you know, the, 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 just haphazardly the Ventolas were in one place and La Francis somewhere else, well, it became their place. And as, as the years went on, well, it would be at a floor, and then a side, and then this and that. And, and in the old cottages, often under the, the roofs, you will see old pieces of canvas. Well, and in 1905, the township then decided there were too many cottages together. So what is the front of our place from 1882 was part of another house a cottage, two cottages together that was rolled over on logs in 1906. Mm. And then in 1907, two additional cottages were added to it. So I, I, this will be an invite for us if you want to come over and I'll figure out the timing of it either before we go over to the general meeting or after that meeting, which is 6.30 to 8.30, mm -hmm. to come on and it, we have, uh, preserved everything. We, uh, uh, you know, it was a labor of love, not economics. As as with many of these old places, if you wanted to be cost effective, as a matter of fact, one more, one more thing on it. Uh, it was on a triple lot in a very old, decrepit place, uh, which had been condemned. Uh, there were holes in the floor, and raccoons and squirrels living in it, and, and everything. Um, and uh, somebody, we, we put a bin in on it, my wife and I, uh, which was rejected. And so we kept thinking about it and said, we really want to do this. And then the seller, who was a representative <coughs> of the estate, it had, this is the first time it had ever been outside the original family, was very standoffish and we couldn't get back in. Well, here's what had happened. Uh, some other people who lived in the Grove had moved to Pennsylvania and wanted to come back. So they put a bid in on the house, but was contingent on them selling their house in Pennsylvania. They were going to knock it down. Mm. And it was, mm. and build a house for themselves, another house, because they could do that since it was a triple lot. They were going to sell that house and live in the other house. So it was going under the wrecking ball. So we had to top that offer and, and go in all cash, no contingencies. We couldn't check for termites. We couldn't mm. check for anything. So believe me, we were, and it all, it all worked out. But that's, um, you are all invited before or after, and I'll get something out that really yeah, goes through yeah. all your emails on that. But I think you'd enjoy uh, seeing the place, we preserved every scrap of history. The woman that had been in it was one of the artists in the town. Uh, we have a door that she painted with her, her studio on it. 
and she has some biblical sayings on a couple of the beams. Mm, nice. So it would be my pleasure to have you guys there, and it will be a great evening and uh, free food and drink. Great. Wonderful. So, Thank you. Looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. What did you say? Uh, well, uh, again, with many no, thanks to that. staff. I mean, you, 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 going to the next room. limit, now we have videos. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> really. <laughs> Uh, we're going to have drone shots next. I'm sorry, so, Chris. What's the date again, dear? Oh, it's uh, Tuesday, November 7th. That's right. But Thank I'll get something out to everybody. Uh, Thank you. But anyway, with thanks to the staff, with thanks to the commission, um, the chair is open to a motion to adjourn. Actually, I do have two quick yes, things. Sir. Sorry. Oh, yes, yes, sir. It seems like I've been a busy tonight. Staff so sorry about that. From you, but Frank, you're worth waiting. Chris, just in terms of, Chris, of updates, did you let the... Commission members know about your article in the journal, or because mm -hmm. I know that was mentioned at planning, but I'm not sure that was mentioned here. Uh, I assume that everyone receives the MAHDC okay. newsletter. So I know Commissioner Far well. Feinstein saw it. Okay. I saw it as well. Thank it was you. Wonderful. <laughs> I'm very impressed. You, yeah. you mean, you, your I registered article in the MAHDC journal. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. I registered for the Washington Grove, um, but did anyone else? Yeah. I did. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. But, it, Frank, thank you, because that's worth mentioning. Uh, this is really a remarkable city and a remarkable commission. Um, I, I forget the exact number of commissions they have, but this is amazing. Nobody, Chris, I think has done uh, the kind of study you did, and if they did, with, with that degree of... of uh, uh, detail, and I know it was wonderful because I had great difficulty following it, so I knew it was great. Uh, but yeah, wow. Well, thank you. Yeah, and 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 it's making the shitty city shine. Uh, and and you staff members are amazing. I anyway, wow. It seemed worth mentioning <laughs> at the meeting itself. Frank, anything else? Um, yeah, the one other thing, um, it was not so much regarding this commission, but we had a question come up um, before the planning commission, just uh, uh, staff informally had said, hey, got a question on minute approval. And it had often been in my mind, but many other things come up. So, like, since you asked, I now have an excuse to look into this, so I'll get back to you. Um, and the question for minute approval is simply, do you really have to have been present at the last meeting in order to vote on the minutes? And that issue came up um, uh, tonight. Um, it's not at all unusual for commission members to say, I'd rather recue it, I'd rather not. However, uh, looking at Robert's Rules of Order, which is a backup and mm -hmm. does apply where, where our rules don't specify, and other meeting uh, sites and other elements of, uh, of discussing how do you run a meeting and that could be other for instance you have the Maryland Municipal League you have Planning Commissioner group there can be other for other 50 states as well um, as to how do we deal with this the very consistent point is you don't have to have been there at all because it is appropriate for the members who were there to say yes this looks good this is what I recall but the purpose of the minutes is not a transcript. It's simply to record actions taken, and generally in a, in a fairly summary fashion. And so in voting for it, even if you weren't there, you're not voting for everything that was said. You're simply voting that, yes, I agree that this is an accurate reflection of what was there. So again, it can be appropriate to have the members who were there to say, make the motion, uh, perhaps in the second. but. The fact that you weren't there does not need, you certainly can recuse, we can't tell you that you can't, but in terms of Robert's rules and the way meetings are handled, you don't have to. So do you want us to start the entire meeting over somewhere? No, 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 no Frank and the lady that ran it did it. They and kept the thing moving along very, uh, in, in, in a brisk, engaging fashion to the point where now he's being worked like a rented mule. He Not only is he here tonight, but he's got to shoot out in the morning to 
uh, make a presentation. So, you know, our the Gaithersburg's reach is further than you might think. Well, actually, there's um, a presentation tomorrow morning, and it is at 7.30, and I'm not making it up, um, in Annapolis. Um, and they actually said, if you could get there at 7, and I'm thinking... <laughs> that's the, sure, let's let's up, not have put, the record put me reflect up at the that historic I, ends of Annapolis. That's right. I'll be right. There. Uh, exactly. Uh, right that now. was my wife's comment. Um, <laughs> but uh, then the week after that, actually, the uh, the Maryland Planning Commissioners Association um, is, is having uh, on November second is having their um, annual meeting, and part of that's a training, and we're we're doing the open meetings thing there too. So. Certainly, he's getting around. So, thank so you. We have some superstars here. <laughs> yes, we do. Right. Okay, so, so did we get ever get a motion to adjourn? No, we did not. I move that we adjourn. Second. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.